Sorry about that. Um, yeah, so Wilma is the Director of Training and E-Learning Initiatives at Longsight and is a Kai Community Coordinator for the Aperio Foundation. She has more than 20 years experience in faculty training, LMS administration, online pedagogy, instructional design, online course and program development, teaching and technical writing. Wilma has been involved with the Sakai project since 2009 and plays a, le plays a leadership role in a number of Sakai community groups. Wilma holds a master's degree in technical writing <clears throat> from the University of Central Florida and as well as a doctorate of education in instructional technology and distance education from Nova Southeastern University. She is an Aperio Fellow and a member of the Sakai PMC. All right, Wilma. Great. Thanks, Derek. Um, so uh, welcome, everybody. And uh, thanks for attending our What's New in Sakai 21 session. I'm going to take you through some of the new features that are coming in the upcoming release. And hopefully, we'll have a little bit of time at the end for some questions. So um, feel free to um, enter questions into the chat if you have them as we go. And I'll try to address them um, as, as we move along. Um, if I don't get to them in line, then we'll, we'll kind of save some time at the end. So um, Let's start off first with um, one big change in Sakai 21 that's not necessarily uh, related to features, um, is more so related to the schedule in which it's released. So we did do um, a little bit of, of changing this year. Now, just for some contrast, these are some of our historical release dates. So um, Sakai 19, you can see it came out, uh, the .o version in March of 2019, and then we had, you know, know, progressive maintenance releases um, every uh, two to three months or so, give or take. Um, and then uh, Sakai 20, which was the, the current release that's out there now, um, was delayed just a little bit due to the COVID pandemic um, that put us behind the eight ball a little bit. We were on track to get things out in March again. Um, in uh, 2020, but again, with the, the pandemic, that kind of slowed things down a little bit. Um, so it came out at the end of April. And then we've had uh, one maintenance release and we have another one targeted for um, for this month. Hopefully by the end of November, we'll have a 20.2 that's available. Um, so now for, for Sakai 21, we are actually targeting late December of this year. So it's a much quicker pace than we're, we were looking at in previous versions. And we're hoping that the, the dot one, the first maintenance release will be out in February um, early March of, of next year. So why did we make that change? Um, well, we wanted to better align with the academic schedule. A lot of people like to upgrade over the summer, and it's nice if they can have a little bit more mature release to upgrade um, when it's already had sort of one um, dot release out to fix a lot of those early bugs that come out with, with every software product on a Dotto release. Um, and we uh, we also wanted to um, make it a little easier to do like one release per quarter. So if we have something out right at the very beginning of the year, that makes it a little more realistic to be on that quarterly maintenance release schedule. Um, so it does mean that we have a shorter development time and that it is done to get the features out to folks faster. So you're not waiting quite so long for some of the new features. And, um, and we also wanted to be able to focus more on performance enhancements and, and backend updates in this next release um, so that we can try to kind of fix some of those uh, performance issues that, that people have noted. Um, all right, so now let's dig into the actual features, things that you'll be seeing more from a user perspective. Um, and um, the first and probably the most obvious you'll notice is we now have dark mode. I know um, a lot of you may be used to dark mode on your cell phones or tablets um, or your you know, browsers are, are doing that now. So we actually have a dark mode for Sakai now, thanks to um, Michael Green and the um, 
Sakai UI group that's been working. I know Sean Foster was working with him quite a bit on that. Um, so I don't want to steal his thunder too much. Um, Michael is actually going to do a lightning talk on dark mode, so you'll get to see more of it. Um, this is just sort of a taste of, of what uh, he's going to show for you guys during the lightning talks this afternoon. Um, Another new thing is Dashboard. Dashboard is a brand new tool. Um, it is kind of intended to take the place of the overview tool eventually anyway. Um, but it's it's made to, um, to be sort of a uh, an area where you can go and it consolidates a lot of the current activity and we've got this idea of having these widgets you see these different widgets um, and we'll be adding more widgets in the future um, but it is also um, editable so you can actually choose which layout you prefer you can choose your different dashboard layouts you can also customize which widgets display on the um, the dashboard uh, area so there's a lot of user preference user selection there and we did quite a bit of um, user testing and just talking with folks and showing them different iterations of a dashboard concept and um, and so this is what we were able to implement for 21 obviously we'll be adding to it and refining it for future versions but we're very excited about dashboard um, the gradebook has a few new enhancements. Um, you can now export the category average when you're exporting grades from the gradebook to a spreadsheet. Um, that's now an option there to, to include that in your export file. And the um, the messaging within the grade, gradebook, I don't know if you guys have tried that out yet, uh, where you can message students directly from the gradebook. That's been enhanced a little bit and now you can actually send uh, messages to different groups of folks and you can enter um, minimum score, max score. Um, so you can get a little more flexibility in the types of, of messages that you can select to send out to people um, based on grades. So that's a new item in the gradebook. Um, the lessons tool saw quite a few um, enhancements actually due to um, some contributions from University of Dayton. They it contributed quite a few nice um, enhancements to the lessons tool. And again, these will be um, spotlighted again this afternoon during the lightning talks. So um, Dave Bauer from U Dayton is going to be talking about those in a little more depth. But again, just a taste of things to come. There's an improved add edit dialogue when you add content. There is a new layout option when you um, choose the layout for your page. You can choose from some pre-configured um, options there. There's an improved reordering screen. So it's kind of indented and formatted a little bit, shows you a little more, um, you know, the type of, of item. Uh, and there's uh, better display indicators for things that have um, date release on them. So you can see from the instructor view, it looks like that. And from the student, you can see when it will be released, even though it's not released yet. Um, gives a little more information for the user. There's also um, some additional controls over the, the section formatting. You know how you can do blocks of, of sections or columns in the lessons tool. Um, it's been uh, turned into a little cog icon rather than the icon that's there in the current version. And you also have some different choices here for color schemes that you can apply to those sections. So, um, so that's been enhanced as well. So thank you to the U Dayton folks for contributing those. Um, there were quite a number of LTI 1.3 slash LTI Advantage improvements, and Dr. Chuck um, can talk about those, I'm sure, at greater length, but um, there were a few that I wanted to mention. Um, the line item, content item, deep link, those improvements will um, improve the way grade release and grade calculation is, is um, handled, and it'll also um, support scores other than 100 if the, the item 
program that you're linking to um, has like, you know, a 10 point score, 20 point score or something, it's going to sync up better with the grade book so that it doesn't just go to the grade book as 100. Um, there's also a, several areas in the interface where you have to copy these long strings of characters. And so now there have been some copy buttons added there to make that a little bit easier to copy and paste that information from one area to another um, when you're setting up tools. Um, there's also a new LTI assignment type in the assignment tool. When you choose the submission type, there's the external tool um, as an option now. So you can choose to have an assignment that's actually an LTI. So that's, um, that's brand new in, in 21. Rubrics has a few uh, new bells and whistles as well. So now you can search within your list of rubrics. This is for both the ones in the course and any shared rubrics that might be on the system. You can search by title, site, or author. You just enter in your search term here and it will filter the results to show you um, anything that matches. So that makes it a lot easier to find any um, specific rubrics that you might be looking for if there are a whole bunch of them. Um, available to you. There's also now a weighted criteria option in the rubric area. You'll see here this little percent, um, it changes. It's like a little toggle. It'll either change to a, like a pound sign for number or a percent sign for the weighted. And so if you change it to percent, then it gives you the option to uh, weight your criteria. So if you have um, a little bit more advanced um, things that you want to do with your criteria within the rubric when you're setting it up. You can do that here now. And the Sakai Grader, now the document preview. Um, that it did have document preview in version 20, but it, it's been enhanced. So it does now support PDF files, open office, um, document, uh, Word documents, docx files. So a wider variety of, of files are now supported um, in the document preview. And these are just um, showing you a few different um, things that you might see previewed in that preview pane. All right, so that's all I have for you guys in terms of new features. Do you have any questions for me? I'm seeing yay and wow in the chat. That's always good. <laughs> Let me back up here. Um, I didn't see any questions. Yeah, people are excited about the you Dayton contributions and the LTI updates. Um, Will Matt, it's Tom Cohen. I've got a question um, about mm -hmm. the rubrics. Yep. Um, I'm very excited about uh, the weighing of the categories that is possible now percentage wise. Does that also mean that um, the weight actually, uh, or that the rubric will also calculate towards the amount of points that can be gained on, for example, an, an uh, assignment to which your rubric is uh, being attached. So if the rubric would... Um, if it uh, scales to the yeah. assignment points. You know, I'm not sure. I would have to double check on that. I think it is intended to, but mm -hmm. I haven't tested it. So that's not a definitive yet, yes, but I, I, it's, it's a maybe. <laughs> Okay, so thank you. I'd have to check on it and see, but I, I believe that that was moving toward that goal. So yeah, if it's not there wonderful. yet, that was definitely the in intent in the long term. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Had a couple questions come in. Uh, one from Angela: Will there will there be the ability to use full calendar in place of the current calendar tool? Um, unfortunately, not for 21. We do have that on the roadmap for Sakai 22. So um, it would be one more, you know, version that we would have to wait for that. We were hoping to get that in 
but due to the compressed time frame, because we lost some time in the beginning of this year because of the pandemic, it slowed us down a little bit. And then we moved it back. Um, we normally have been releasing in like, you know, spring and March time frame. So we moved that back by three months to target December instead. So we've lost several months of development time and there just wasn't enough time to get the full calendar swap out into 21. Um, but that is something that we hope to have available um, for people that want to maybe pilot it before it's actually contributed. So, um, you know, looking ahead over the next development cycle um, if people wanted to kind of test it out um, prior to Sakai 22 um, as soon as it's available we could um, install it as a custom um, type of thing but then it wouldn't actually be in core Sakai until Sakai 22 at the soonest Okay. Um, um, people were asking a little more about full calendar. Full calendar, um, it looks a lot more like Google Calendar. It looks and works a lot more like Google Calendar. So you can drag things around. You can make things different colors. You can, um, you know, uh, have multi-day events. You can, you know, it, it's just a little more user friendly, a little more modern of a calendar interface. And it, it is open source. So it's something that we could just kind of swap out our current calendar and, and replace it with that. It just, we have to hook it into a lot of different places in Sakai in order to do that. So it, um, it takes a little bit of development to get that done. Thank you, Wilma. Uh, Becky's uh, was asking, I hope you're posting your presentation. Yeah, all, all sessions are recorded. Um, it may take a couple of weeks, uh, but women will get everything, all all the recordings put together and uh, it's send it out uh, so everyone can access um, any of the presentations made today. Um, Dave Evelyn asked, do the LTI updates include the ability to retain LTI links from one course to another in the import from course site process? I know there was a lot of work that was done on that, and I believe the answer is yes. I don't know, is Laura on the call? Because I know Notre Dame was intimately involved with that process. Laura, Sarah's on the call. Laura, do you happen to know? I'm sorry, could you pose that question again? I was if the LTI it. links copy from one course to another when you import, I believe that they do, but I, know, I haven't tested it myself. I can't speak to that. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, um, I know that that was being worked on. So I believe the answer is yes, um, but I would I would need to test it and make sure that they all copy over as intended. The next question from Angelica, we do not have the Sakai grader in our current bundle. Can you explain a bit more about it? Becky did post a video, but if you wanted to give a brief overview yeah, so the um, the Sakai grader is a, a new interface for grading assignments. And let me, I'll just back up in the presentation a little bit. This is kind of what it looks like. Um, so here's the, this is basically the assignment content area. So you've got, um, there's a, a window over here on the side that shows the student's submission and it will preview the document for you in that window. And then on the, the right hand side, there's a panel where you can enter your feedback. So there's a place to put your grade, um, a place to put written feedback, um, using the, the rich text editor. Um, you can still put an attachment on it if you wanted to send the student a file. Um, and there's also a place for private notes that you can um, you know, put a note on a submission that only other instructors would see. So if it was something where you're team teaching or maybe you had a TA grading things, you could put a little note on there that's meant for the instructors not uh, for the student and um, and you can still do things like allow resubmission and that sort of thing um, it will let you skip to to like the next ungraded item and you can choose this is um, this layout can be docked on the left versus the right if you have a preference like that so um, it's meant to be more of like a um, speed grader type interface and um, meant to be a little more user-friendly 
for um, for grading and it does work with rubrics these examples don't actually show the rubric but if you did have a rubric attached you would see a little rubric icon here and you could click to pull up the rubric and grade it right on top of the submission so that you don't have to kind of be in two different screens you've just got sort of this floating window with the rubric that you can move around on top of the student's submission. All right, so I'm seeing a few comments about the grader. Um, let's see, Tonka said that they're getting positive feedback. However, would it be possible to keep the right hand part visible while scrolling? Um, would make it easier. Currently, it's only one scroll bar. Um, yeah, if that's not already a JIRA, I would definitely put one in. Um, I think that's a good uh, enhancement request. So I'm not sure if, if that exists out there, but if it doesn't, I encourage you to, to put in a JIRA yeah, about that. I can, I can take a look this afternoon. Okay, thanks, Jerk. Yep. Um, let's see, Angelica is saying um, this is a major improvement over the legacy interface and the assignment tool, follow up with the technical team. Yeah, it is pretty nice. It's, it's a much um, nicer interface for grading, I think. Um, the Sakai grader is only for assignments currently. Um, we are planning to have that also be available in other tools, but currently it's only in the assignment tool. That was the first one that we added it to. Um, it's actually part of the um, sort of an offshoot of the centralized grading service, um, which is another kind of behind the scenes improvement to simplify and, and, and uh, make the grading process in various tools a little more um, consistent across tools. And so we hope to tie the grader into any place where there is grading done, manual grading. Um, but that's still to be done in a future version. Currently, it's only assignments. Um, let's see. Dave is saying he's gotten great feedback on the new grader and rubrics. Um, they launched it um, in three course redesigns and the faculty love it. That's awesome. I'm glad to hear that, Dave. Very cool. All right. Any other questions? Just got a feedback here. Feedback from instructor. I did not expect the same feedback comment dialog box to remain when switching from one student to the next. I want the upper left corner of the feedback box to always coincide with the upper left of the browser tab window when you first click on the feedback comment button on each student so that it does not cover up the missing of the browser tab window. Okay, I'm not sure I'm following. That was kind of a, a complicated mm -hmm. <laughs> comment. But again, I encourage you to, to make a JIRA for that. Um, because if it's a usability sort of thing, then um, definitely we want to take that into consideration. So I encourage you, if you guys are using Grader or some of these other features, any of these new features um, or existing features, mm -hmm. and you think something needs to work a little bit better, or you have an idea for something that would make it more um, more easy to easily used by your folks. Um, just you know, feel free to go into Jira and create a feature request, and that's how these things happen. So all of these things that I've just showed you were all originally feature requests. So um, that's definitely uh, the best way to get things added to Sakai is to just get those requests out there and then um, just kind of let people know, hey, there's this new feature that we're trying to, you know get added. Um, and we're happy to add those also to the teaching and learning call agenda. We do um, go over JIRAs uh, usually at the beginning or end of the call. And then sometimes if we don't have a speaker, we'll just spend the whole um, session on you know talking about different JIRAs and talking about usability and talking about you know uh, what works best uh, for various tools. So um, I encourage you to, to create those JIRAs and to bring them up at future teaching and learning calls. Uh, Dave has asked, uh, do we expect any features um, may be released in the point releases? Also, what is the cutoff date for feature request in 22? 
Um, well, the freeze date for 22 has yet to be established. So you've still got plenty of time to put those feature requests in. Um, if it's anything like this year, the, fee the freeze date for 21 was, um, I think it was like September. So I would estimate August or September of next year uh, would be a potential freeze date for 22. So you've got, you know, until next year, yeah, to get those in. Um, but obviously, the sooner you get them in, the better, the longer people have to think about them, work, work on them, and, and uh, incorporate them into any work that's currently being done. Um, so I, I think there was another part to that question. Uh, there was, what do we do we expect features may be released in the point releases? Right, right. Um, we don't typically release features in maintenance releases. However, there has been some talk um, about potentially doing that for features that don't um, create undue burden on folks that are just kind of upgrading to get the bug fixes um, or if it's a feature that can be easily disabled by default so that it's not really going to change things for people that are running a given version in production. So um, there's one feature in particular that I'm thinking about that is is a possibility for coming out in a point release and that's a new global nav theme or skin. So um, we worked quite a bit on designing a new global nav um, look and feel for Sakai, but there wasn't time to get it actually implemented um, in time for 21. But what we hope to do is have that available as an additional skin um, that people could maybe add or turn on. Um, and, you know, their default would just be the current skin that's already there and it, it wouldn't disrupt any courses um, that are running in, in the, the default version of um, of 21, but that there would be another skin that you could apply if you wanted to use the new global nav instead. Um, and we would be calling it the Trinity um, theme. So that would um, potentially, if it's done in time and it seems solid enough, might be something that you would see in a point release. Okay, we got about four minutes left. We got a handful of questions here. Is the forms tool redesign in the works? We have been looking at the forums tool. Um, a lot of people have mentioned that it needs some love. <laughs> so um, there have been several efforts to maybe tweak things and um, look at ways that we can uh, smooth out some of those gnarly workflows and in, in forums among other tools. So it's definitely within the roadmap as something that we want to tackle within the next year or two. Um, it's not going to see any major changes for 21. There might be a few small tweaks um, that that you notice, but by and large, uh, any, any major changes in forums would have to wait until 22. Uh, it, is, it is in the works, though. Is there thought being put towards redesign the way that prerequisite relationships are built or shown in the lessons tool, that way allowing for branching? Um, we actually have uh, quite a big upgrade for lessons that was um, pushed out a bit because there were some other things that took priority. But um, there, there's a, the new lessons that we've been kind of, um, you know, storyboarding and, and, you know, talking to people about. And so the new lessons will upgrade some of the underlying architecture of lessons, um, which is necessary because the code underlying a lot of lessons is has kind of gotten Updated. Um, so that needs to be updated. And uh, at the same time, we want to build in some things that would make it more user friendly for people. So things like templates, things like, um, you know, being able to create branching scenarios, having more control over conditional release, um, you know, things like uh, having a history and an undo button. Um, those sorts of, of features have kind of gone into that concept document for the new lessons. Um, but that's not going to be in 21. Unfortunately, that would be a Sakai 22 or future um, enhancement that you would see at that point. Okay, got a minute left. Is there a plan to have a lockdown browser option for test and 
for test security and tests and quizzes? Not that I'm aware of. I haven't really heard anything about, um, I mean, there is the integration with Responda's Lockdown Browser, but um, but I have not heard anything about an, um, a native Lockdown Browser for tests and quizzes. Okay, there's some communication back and forth in the chat, but I'm not seeing any other questions, just some back and forth between yeah, there was a comment about the Morpheus being the initial skin. Um, that's why we're calling uh, the new global nav the Trinity <laughs> skin. <laughs> so yes, it is a matrix reference. All right. Okay. Well, thank you guys. Um, thanks for all your great questions. I'm sorry I didn't know the answers to a few of them, but um, I'll be happy to research those and get with you offline if you uh, are still curious. And I hope that you enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you, Wilma. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye.